How are we doing guys? So let's go over the pick chart from Friday, uh, March 18th. So this is a pretty common looking chart we see on uh, the low floats, uh, typically the small caps. And it's not uncommon to see this kind of um, choppy range we got going on here. It's kind of like forming a wedge. I like to call it a wedge pattern. You can call it whatever you want. Um, kind of a triangle, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, you know, when we see these moves, you know, a lot of traders get themselves chopped up in this range, uh, including myself. You know, I've, I've been there, definitely been there many times. And, you know, what I found is the best way to trade these is just to wait for the breakout. So wait for it to break to the downside or to the upside. In this case, um, you know, I was focused more on the downside because this stock was not, this chart was not bullish to me. Uh, we're seeing these wicks constantly getting sold into. You know, plenty of inventory here. Every time it tries to pop into the 740s, 750s, gets rejected. You know, several times it, it's shown us. Uh, so every time the longs are jumping in here trying to push this thing up, it's getting rejected. So you're getting a lot of longs, potential bag holders here, right? You know, if this thing fails to break out, where do you think all these longs are going to go? Eventually, they're going to have to dump, right? So, you know, that's kind of what I was anticipating here on this chart. And, you know, if we take a look at the daily chart here, it was also running into uh, daily resistance levels. So kind of the 750s, um, all the way up to kind of $8 area it had some some uh, supply. So, um, and as you can see, the chart's not traded much volume. So, you know, if that's real supply in this area, who knows, probably not, uh, you know, considering the volume here. Um, you know, it's traded more volume in the last two days than it has this entire run. So, um, you know, probably not a lot of supply, but more, not a lot of real supply or bag holders, but uh, more, more so short sellers just uh, attacking this thing and, you know, anticipating that this level is going to act as resistance. And, uh, you know, sure enough, it did it, uh, but it could have easily gone the other way. Right. Uh, but, you know, in trading, all we care about is uh, probabilities and in this case uh, the probabilities were in the favor of the shorts uh, so I'll kind of explain the trade uh, I took kind of explain why I took it and just go into a little more detail uh, so this was the trade on Friday uh, so I entered right in this candle around here uh, just as it was breaking down now I didn't quite wait for it to break down as I usually do those are the you know the most confirmation is when you're waiting for the, the actual support level to break the actual trend line to break uh, that's when you're going to get the highest probability trade uh, but for me i kind of was just watching the tape and i could kind of see the tape was looking starting to look heavy and very weak around this area i didn't see many buyers it was kind of just looking like it was running out of steam here and that's when i decided to enter the position and i saw i saw some sellers starting to hit the tape and i just kind of joined in uh, but the, you know, the highest probability entry probably would have been here at the 680-ish level, um, 680 break. But I got in a little higher around 692 average, um, tried to get filled as that, as I saw those 690s uh, getting taken out. So, um, so, you know, pretty, pretty solid trade worked out well. The only downside uh, to this trade was the locate fees. And as I mentioned in my Twitter, um, the locate fees were very pricey on this. So, you know, I didn't pay a ridiculous amount, but I did pay around 19 cents per share. And, you know, I typically don't like to pay that much. Uh, as some of you know already, the I have a 10% rule. So I typically don't like to, to pay 10% of my profits or my potential profits in, in borrow fees. Uh, that's my limit. Uh, and in this case, I paid more closer to like 18%. So pretty high, pretty high in fees. You know, that's about one fifth of your profit in fees. And, and I normally don't like to do that, but you know, what can you do? Sometimes you just see these setups and they're just too good to pass on and you gotta, you gotta pay the fee, right? It's just the cost of doing business sometimes. Uh, but you also got to be smart with it, right? So, I mean, if this was, if the borrows in this case were, let's say 50 cents per share or 60 cents. Um, I believe I saw them for almost 80 cents per share at some at some point. In that case, I definitely would not want to be participating because you're going to break even on the trade, right? So what's the point of taking it? Uh, but in this case, you know, I ended up making a little over a buck a share. 
uh, in in net profits. So probably about a buck of buck oh five. So not too bad. Uh, and then minus the and yeah, minus the borrow fee, which was around nineteen cents. So not too bad, right? You know, the net profit was pretty good. But um, I typically do try to avoid paying you know more than ten percent of the potential profits. And I knew this trade was not probably not going to give me you know, close to like two bucks a share in profits, right? And as we can see, it, you know, basically gave you about a buck a share. And then after hours kind of went a little lower if you held, but you know, I didn't want to sit, sit in after hours, right? Uh, so I just took it off there. Uh, but the reason I stayed in this trade much longer than I normally do is pretty much due to the borrow fee, right? I just wanted to maximize the profit uh, to make the borrow fee make sense. And, but I typically probably would have been out in these dips here around six. Uh, that's just my style of trading. You know, I don't like to hold all day. I don't like to be in the market all day. I just like to get in, get out, you know, one or two hours maximum and just take my profits. But uh, in this case, you know, I kind of had to just sit through it and really try to maximize the trade. Um, so, you know, as we can see here, once it cracked this, this trend line, you know, very, very easy trade, right? Very stress-free, just kind of went straight down and look where it held support if we look left it's you know again like i've said before guys just draw your lines it's not really rocket science you know these levels they hold and they hold for a reason other traders see them as buying opportunities right so previous days high uh, you probably got some shorts covering at that level and maybe they're still underwater so they're trying to cover for break even and then you got the long dip buying it anticipating that level will hold and they were kind of probably thinking in this whole range, they're probably thinking this thing's going to do what it did on the prior day, which was an afternoon squeeze like we saw here, right? So a lot of longs were probably anticipating this same move on Friday. And, you know, when, when you got a lot of longs thinking the same thing, but, you know, they're on the wrong side, that's when you get the, the big fail, right? So, we didn't see too big of a fail here, but we saw, you know, towards the end of the day, it tried to break out there, kind of failed, and then just kind of broke down into the close and then slowly bled out after hours. Uh, so you got like a bunch of longs here that were anticipating this thing was going to rip, right? So they're they're using this uh, $6 zone as their, as their guide for risk. So once that $6 zone broke, as you can see, you know, some longs just stopped out there and... Um, you know, who knows what this thing's going to do on Monday, but uh, we'll see. Maybe it's going to gap down. Maybe it'll gap up. Uh, who knows? Um, just got to play it by ear. Uh, but yeah, that's the trade. So um, basically, again, like it's my, I've explained this pattern in my previous uh, recaps. It's the, you know, my favorite pattern, probably uh, both long and short. Um, you know, for the long side, I like it to be setting up lower, obviously. And then for the short side, I like to be setting up higher right? The better the odds are if it's, you know, if it's higher up, you got better odds on the short side and then lower setting up lower, you got higher odds on the long side, vice versa. So, um, yeah, I'm usually never long biased when it's, you know, setting up when a wedge is setting up here, um, unless it's been consolidating for a long, long time. So, you know, I want to see a long, long consolidation so that I know it's, it's worked out all the longs and it's, you know, it's, it's got higher odds of pushing higher for a next leg. Uh, but in this case, you know, I just didn't trust it for the long side and I was pretty convicted um, it was gonna be a short. So uh, yeah, trade ended up playing out well. Um, you know, I think I got, when I got in, I was, I think I was risking probably like 7.10, so maybe 20 cents of risk at the most. Um, but I would have, I would have been watching it here around the $7 area. Uh, as soon as I got in, I wanted to see it work immediately like it did. So that was great. Um, you know, and again, like this is not, it, you know, you can't expect to time your trades perfectly all the time like this. This is, you know, this kind of, there's always a bit of luck, of course, involved in trading. Uh, but I do try to catch these trades, you know, right as they're breaking. And it, it can be difficult sometimes because, you know, you have to have the patience, first of all, to sit through all this. And, you know, the reason I was able to, skip all this was pretty pretty simple i just was not watching the stock you know it's it's really that simple sometimes just walking away you know shutting off the screens and coming back you know an hour or two later to see what the stock's doing 
you know you might miss a trade yeah that happens but you know at the same time you can definitely avoid getting chopped up if you're one of those traders who just loves to be you know part of the action and just trying to you know FOMO get those FOMO entries in right because you don't want to miss the big drop um, you know but the way I traded it was that's how I prefer to trade these but there's another way to trade uh, these kind of channel wedges and that is to anticipate it you know shorting into the pops right so you got your clear risk as a guide here this 740 750 area so you can basically short into the pops here and risk uh, use this as your guide so you know if the stock blows through that level and then it's you know it keeps ripping you know obviously you have to stop out right um, so you can use a bit of a wider stop and kind of trade it play it like that um, but i prefer to do this uh this way you know waiting for the, the trend to break waiting for the wet wedge to break out uh, because simply because it's higher probability right it's a higher odds setup and there's more confirmation there so when you're anticipating it you're not really sure if it's going to you know if it's going to act as resistance right you don't know they could easily blow this thing through high of the day rip it to eight bucks and stop you out and then they can unload right uh, so i don't really like to shorten the pops it's not really my style um, but you know that whatever works for you right whatever style works best for you um, it's great risk reward if you were doing that um, instead of the trade i took here you get much better risk reward but the odds are not as high in your favor right so you you got to pick your poison really um, in trading that's what it comes down to uh, so yeah that's I think that covers pretty much everything um, I mean what else can I talk about here um, I think aside from the chart and the pattern um, you know I've always mentioned that tape reading is very crucial um, in my opinion uh, to have an edge and what I do is I combine tape reading with the chart and the you know the setup so you know the reason I was able to catch this trade here was simply by watching the tape and watching the pattern set up at the same time right so you have to understand how the tape moves how the tape works and you know you have to read those subtleties in the in the tape like you know the hidden buyers the hidden sellers you know the the weak tape the heavy tape the, the strong tape you have to understand how you know price movement works and how how order flow works in order to you know get these kind of trades to time them just right and you know in my case you know like i said it was definitely a bit of luck as well it's not like you're going to time these trades perfectly every single time but generally speaking if you wait for that obvious trend to break you know when you see this clear up trend here I mean you just draw a line it's a picture perfect trend they were holding um, all you have to do is just really just wait for that that uh, wedge to tighten up a bit here wait for the you know you can see the chop is or the stock is all choppy here really whipsaw kind of action here there's really no edge here, right? Because it can go up, it can go down. I mean, the only edge in these is basically shorting the pops or buying the dips, right? Uh, as the trend is holding and as that resistance is holding. So that's your only edge here. You know, until the stock actually tightens up and starts to form a tighter channel, that's when your edge becomes better, right? That's when you can say, okay, this stock is looking like the range is tightening up a bit here. I can, I can have a bit more of an edge here because I can control my risk a bit better so let's give it a shot if it's if it breaks this level right um you know same same goes for the long side if you see it tightening up i mean if we go back to um it's prior day uh this is not i'm not saying this is a long setup i would take uh, personally because this is this is bearish to me but um you know if you can see this kind of channel here it's just kind of holding this uh it was holding above three bucks here and then just kind of popping to 330 holding so it broke above that channel here and then it started to hold above that channel it started to hold it as support so you know you can kind of see the levels here uh you can kind of see the like the channel forming here in the levels and you know for the long side here you could say hey okay i'm gonna go long as this breaks out over 360 here you know anticipating a breakout and my risk here is the 330s so you have this 360 break you can you can buy and you have your clear risk here, which is around, around 330s, uh, you know, 335, 330, whatever you want to risk uh, in this general area. But this is basically the same thing, right? You're just breaking out of a wedge, you're breaking out of a, a channel. If we can draw some lines here just to make it more visible. You're basically just breaking out of this channel you had here. So, 
So once you do that, you know, you, you've got your very clear risk, you know, the, the stock is tightening, the wedge or the, the channel is tightening up here. You can see it's kind of grinding higher lows, higher lows. Uh, that's that's more bullish. So when it's starting to hold the higher lows, you get that's a bullish signal. And then once it breaks out, that's your your buy signal, right? You can even wait for it to break out and confirm that breakout level as support and then join in, uh, as we saw in this candle here. Um, but you know that's same same thing, right? You just flip it. So whether you're long or short, it's the, kind of the same idea. Uh, the thing thing with me though is I'm, I'm just not as comfortable on the long side especially on these stocks that are just kind of looking weak here um, just generally not a fan because the odds of them doing this kind of move is pretty low um, in my experience so I mean this this kind of uh, basically was a VWAP reclaim I think uh, just on high volume but uh, yeah you typically don't see these moves they're, they're kind of rare so I, I typically don't trade these long side but but as you can see, you know, same same setup on the short side, right? It just was in a channel, kind of a wedge channel, and then it was getting lower lower highs here, lower highs, made an attempt there, clearly held the resistance, it's stuffed there, and then lower highs here, and then boom, broke support, right? That's your breakout. So yeah, that's that's about it for the recap, guys. I um, uh, hope you guys found it helpful. If, if you uh, have any questions as usual, pop them down below, and I'll be happy to answer them. All right, take care, guys.